Good morning, folks. It's Jack here from Peach Guitars. I've been joined today by our good friend, Mr. Greg Dunning. Hello. From Westside, from Dunlop, from Way Huge, MXR, all the stuff that you yeah. know Greg deals with. So thanks for joining us today, Greg. You're welcome, welcome. The reason you're here, no, welcome to you. No, thank, thank you. Welcome me. <laughs> thanks for You're welcome. Yeah. Um, we're checking out some of the new 2020 pedals from yeah. Dunlop Manufacturing today. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you guys may have seen a little overview video that we shot at NAMM with Mr. Brian Kehoe, who very excitably uh, ex <laughs> explained sort of what the ethos of these pedals is. But what we wanted to do was just kind of spend a bit more time uh, with, with Greg and kind of walk through what is new for this year and what each of these pedals kind of represents. Because they're quite big heavy hitters for yeah. the brands, aren't they? So yeah. um, so as you can see, there's four pedals there, all very different. Greg, why don't you take us away and kind of walk through okay. Okay. Well, from we'll right to left. If we start, yeah, right to left. My left or your, no, okay. So we're we're facing we're, the same way. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's the joke. Oh. <laughs> so we'll start with the Q-Zone. Uh, so the Q-Zone has been around a couple of times before. Essentially, it's, uh, it gives you that cocked wah kind of sound, so anything from, you can get a really great uh, kind of Brian May, kind of faux Brian May tone, Michael Schenker, <coughs> uh, Slash, and it just enables you to find a little sweet spot in the frequency range, so if, you, if you're in a band and you can't cut through, you can just stomp on that, mm. push your front end a little bit with the volume control there, select your frequency, and you will smash through the mix. And sometimes you don't even need a, a volume boost because a lot of us use something in the loop. We have a third, a, yeah. a, a next volume up, sort of master volume or something like that. It's just that frequency bandwidth yeah. gives you a real, like you said, a load of cut, doesn't mm. it? So for anyone who's, who's not entirely sure what that is, basically if you imagine a, a wire pedal and you've stopped it at any particular point on its travel, it's very hard to actually do that because you move your foot the slightest yeah, well you knock it millimetric a little, little yeah. thing and it goes off. So that allows you to find any point on that sweep, yeah. have it fixed and then just switch it on and off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I mean, you listed a bunch of names there of guys that famously used that kind of a tone. Yeah. But actually I think you just plug it in and it immediately, things spring to mind straight away, don't they? That you As might it did not have. a little while ago, yeah. As it did, which might be demonstrated, I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'd like to see that. Um, for, for context, anyway, I'm playing Greg's guitar. This is um, Schecter Wembley. Wembley, California. yeah. Humbucker single, single. Yeah, wonderful guitar. Um, and we're also plugged into our good old friend, the Mesa Boogie yep. Triple Crown 50 amplifier. A staple. Yeah, it is a staple, and we're on channel two, so it's kind of a nice crunchy tone. And uh, you'll hear what it does when Greg kicks that pedal in. So you want to play, for reference, just the, the kind of unaffected tone. Yep. So all I did there cool was, sound, isn't it? It's very cool. So all I, I just pushed the front end a little bit. Uh, the Q zone. So the higher you have that, the higher the peak is basically. So it's, okay. you've got you've got that kind of much space, but it's just it does that. Yeah, that's something that I think maybe people misunderstand sometimes about this kind of effect. Is what does what are you actually changing? Yeah. You know, because of the, the that sound changes, but it's not obvious what's actually changing. But I guess no. it's sweeping through a particular band of mid frequency. Yeah. Isn't it? So if you if you can play again for me, I'll put the Q zone right up, and then I'll sweep across the zone, the Q okay. zone. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, it yeah. just gives you an idea, it just changes that, that peak frequency. 
And if only there was a pedal that you could do that with your foot. I know. This is cool. This is like having a human wah. <laughs> Have you ever been called that before? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Welcome to 2020. Thank you very much. So yeah, the Q-Zone is, a, I think, that's just a really nice, and even though that kind of sounds like it might be a bit of a novelty in mm. a way, you could use that as a lead tone, couldn't you? Yeah, oh, within easy. more of a maybe refined context, yeah. if you, and if another, you uh, back the cue a bit. Another thing is with a lot of these pedals that you, you, you plug something in, it gives you a different sound, and it, in, it inspires you in a different way. You come up with new ideas, mm. and it inspires you to play something different or in, uh, play a certain way. Yeah, it's another it's another color in your sonic palette to create your air sculpture. Sure thing. Should yeah. we move on to the next yeah, one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So next in line we have the Octavio, which is. It's the, it's the big cheese wedge mm. Hendrix famously used. Basically, it's popped into a, a small MXR housing. So you can get those really nasty, compressed, weird, spitty sounds. Uh, or you can just use it, I like to use it as a clean boost, so with the fuzz mm. quite low and the output up, so you smash the front end of your amp, but you still get that kind of octave character in there. Yeah, and I think this is it's probably my favorite fuzz circuit, the Octavia, because it's so, it does so many things, like mm. you just said. So the way Greg's got it set now, with barely any fuzz and a lot of output, is, is it, uh, we've got it switched off at the moment, off, so. Yeah. So in its kind of default state, that was neck pickup on a Strat, if you just roll back the volume and the tone a little bit. I'll crack the fuzz up a little bit there. Yeah, to compensate. So I'll yeah. play full out and then I'll back off. Is the sound. I think they've got yeah. petrodining. It's almost because it tracks. Really? It's got a name. I think it has got a name, yeah. It, cool. it, it kind of, it's almost like it doesn't know what note to track. Yeah. So it just goes, ah. I remember uh, hearing Philip Sace describe it as like the sound of a howling monkey. Yeah. When you get the kind of two notes together. If you go above the 12th fret and just do a yeah. little triad kind of thing. ring mod or if you go lower down and do two notes on the wound strings yeah it's like a synthy kind of thing what's interesting about it is that i think sometimes people play this kind of thing it's like what well, it's not an octave at all it's just a disgusting yeah, fuzz what sound is, that's not that's horrible the octave that's you the have point to of sort it. of find it and yeah. coax it out don't you it's it's kind of quite a, a like you, it's on, something is on the edge of destruction yeah and that's but, what it's all about but if you just play it your bridge pickup kind of full on, it does react like a, a what people think of as a quote unquote fuzz pedal. Yeah, it's really nice. And so, what if we push the fuzz kind of? Would you, do you want, so if we compensate, we'll pull the output the back a little bit and we'll go yeah. right flat out with the fuzz. Really compressed kind yeah. of sound. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, but they're still like clean enough to stop as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, there's enough fuzz in there. I mean, it, it always works better also in front of a, a kind of a, a distorted or sort yes. of overdriven sound because it, if you put it in front of a clean amp. I mean, if that's your thing, that's your thing, but it, it can should be. We, should we try that? Yeah. Maybe? Let's we switch to the, the clean channel of the. Yeah. Um, so here we are, we're on clean. Triple crown. Actually, sounds okay. It's not bad, <laughs> is it? It's a little bit cleaner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want that, it's if you want the spikier. Hendrix thing, yeah. you need an amp that's slightly Absolutely, cookie, don't you? yeah, yeah. So if we move along the line. Mm. So this is probably uh, the most exciting uh, yeah. release yeah. of the year, which is a very cool collaboration with 
uh, Paul Cochran, who mm -hmm. was the original designer of the Timmy pedal. This kind of came out of the blue, I think, because yeah. it's the first time he's actually lent his official name, Timmy, to a yeah. pedal that is... He's, I don't think do he's thing. never done a, a collaboration with anyone. And mm. as far as I know, I think he just... He's a pretty much a one-man band, I think. Yeah. And he builds the wall himself in Nashville. And I think he... The word is uh, he can't keep up with demand, because it's, it's a great little pedal. Yeah. Um, it's quite unique. And he's just teamed up with MXR and the small form factor is not something he would ever do because they're all hand wired yeah and imagine that i mean that would be a pain yeah so he we've just done a uh, a small footprint timmy it's not a clone it's 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 a timmy it's a mini timmy and it's quite unique from the point of view of the eq is two band eq uh the bass control is wired before the game uh so if we actually if you do a bit of yeah so we're still on the clean channel <laughs> Yeah, and we were talking earlier about um, kind of how ampy it is, and I guess it's really natural. I guess it's kind of what it was meant to to recreate originally. Yeah. It doesn't sound anything like a, a tube screamer style no. pedal or Very anything unique. like that. You have three different clipping styles. Uh, if you do a bit of playing again, so I'll just move through the clipping styles. So left is symmetrical, compressed. The central uh, position is open, so you've got loads of headroom, not much compression there. Hmm. And then we move to the right position through. That's asymmetrical. Okay. So. Okay. it more when you have the gain you turned the up. Game. Yeah. Mm. But that's so you've got quite a versatile little pedal. If you can play a gain for me, I'll just show you the bass control. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, this is wired before the gain. <laughs> So it is, it's very, I don't know any pedal, aside from having something like an EQ pedal in front of your drive pedal, I don't know, well no, it would be, I don't know. But it's, I've never played with any other pedal that makes you nod and smile like that for a long yeah, time. Yeah, it's a lovely thing and... So natural, it's really open sounding, very organic. I'm trying not to use the terms that you would always use. Transparent, yeah, but it's organic. But it's true. It is when true. When you turn down the guitar volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you do a bit of that, it, it's very dynamic and it does clean up very well. So if I, if we crank the gain up, yeah. So I'll go from full on on the guitar. So again, clean tone. <laughs> Real dust in that pot. Yeah, I'll well, put you, that there myself. You're a, you play man gigs, don't you? So do, you put, yeah, yes. You sweat and all sorts on this guitar. Yeah, not too much sweat. In no, yeah. but that's yeah, <laughs> technical difficulty. Yes. Uh, so that's the Timmy. Um, I believe they're around one thirty nine. Yeah, really good price point yeah. as well. Which the Timmy always has been, in fairness to it. But like you say, it's an accessibility thing. Yep. People just aren't able to get them. No. Nope. Uh, but now, obviously, you can come to Peach Guitars and get yourself a Timmy. Let's have a new one. Um, maybe yeah. we could just quickly hear what it sounds like on the gain channel of the amp. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. because quite often you hear these amp type pedals on a clean sound, but. So, okay, you give us the. Uh... <clears throat> So 
to just like, almost like a clue like just to yeah. smash the front yeah. end of the amp a little bit. <laughs> Cleans up really well, yeah. even, even with the guitar. The guitar doesn't, it. but <laughs> it gets there eventually. The it's pedal the does, yeah. It, the, the, the crackling is nothing to do with the pedal. No, yeah, that's no. that's me. Sorry, uh, so yeah, that as a click, and you, you don't lose any of the character of the amp, it just kind of almost like puts a magnifying glass over it and just gives you more. Oh, that's a good it does. description. Yeah, that's why they pay me. I think they paid me. They pay you a wage. They pay me some money. Yeah. 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 Good. Well, well done. <laughs> Thank well you. earned. <laughs> Thank you. So nice. moving on. Yeah. To the the way huge swollen pickle, the third version of the the swollen pickle. So it's the way huge smalls. So they've, uh, they've basically shrunk it down to a small pedal format. Tweaked a couple of things on it. Just switching out the pots for switches. Just two very usable styles. Uh, I think the best thing to do. Is just to play the thing. Let's play the thing. Yeah, should I go back to the clean channel? Yes. Yep. Um, so you hear maximum fuzz destruction. So all I would like to do is just because you can cover a lot of ground with this pedal. You can go from sort of 60s psychedelic offensive fuzz. Yeah. To some really fat, warm, kind of Hendrixy style fuzz. So you can play anything from kind of like, like guys like Mogwai, kind of shoe shoegazy kind of stuff. Queens of the Stone Age, Hendrix, bit of Led Zepp. Mm -hmm. Let me just try and you play. Laying down the gauntlet. Aren't yeah, you? follow follow my tone settings. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. See what happens. Right, ready. After that, a lot uh, of powerful <laughs> EQ shaping in. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the filter control is, uh, could, could potentially be a linear tone control, so it kind of you've got so much scope in there. Like, if you depending on where you put a tone control in the, in the second, as you know, it will either be like there's certain amp brands and pedal brands where you set the dials wherever and it sounds great no matter what yeah, you do. Yeah. And then if you have it, uh, you've got so much tweakability in there, and it's you can get anything out of that. You can cover a lot of ground. So if you if you are a fuzz guy but need a couple of fuzzes, sometimes yeah. you can essentially just get that and cover a lot of ground. That's right. And what's interesting is hearing it next to the Octavio because mm. that's the stark opposite, where that's just a simple plug and play kind of fuzz. It is mm. what it is. The swollen pickle can really be oh, anything, anything in the fuzz realm. Yep. And uh, what I was going to say before was how. The evolution of this pedal is interesting because it started out, I believe, as George Tripp's kind of take on a big muff yeah. style circuit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but has now adapted all these different like the switches big muff, and swollen pickle. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So uh, nothing rude about that. Nothing. Absolutely but, nothing. Yeah, it's a great evolution, and now obviously it's smaller than ever before, so you can cram it on your pedal board if you need a fuzz. Yeah, I mean this is the size that most people would stick on their boards. Yeah. But you think of the, the, the first version of the Swollen Pickle, I mean, they fetch ridiculous money. It's a classic pedal. And now it's available at a reasonable size and a reasonable price mm -hmm. for your board. Lovely stuff. Last thing, should we just hear it with a bit of gain on the amp? Yes. So just use it just to get a bit of character. Yeah. A bit of pickle on your on your boogie. Sand, sandwich of tone. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I'll crank crack the condiments. 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> Selection of pedals. Thank you very much. And we didn't turn them all on. We resisted the urge to do that. No, I'm not. I nearly had the temptation. Gonna <laughs> I'm not going to do that. No. Well, what I think should happen now is you guys, once you finish watching this video, you should get to peachguitars.com as quickly as you can, or come and see us in store. Check out these new 2020 Dunlop pedals for yourself. And thank you very much <laughs> for your time. You're welcome. And your very gracious explanations of these pedals, guys. Thanks. If you want any more info on them, check out the website peachguitars.com. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned, and we'll see you again soon.